So I'm really excited about today's video because we're going to be talking about how could you simulate a phishing attack within your organization to be able to identify vulnerable users and therefore give them the correct training that they need before a real attack might happen in your organization. So this is where Microsoft Simulator training comes in. It gives you the ability to create all different types of simulations that we're seeing from real world examples. And then if a user happens to get compromised, we can put them on a training path that's gonna help them see and understand what they should be looking out for in the future. And then of course, giving you actionable reports so that your IT professionals and security professionals can see how the company's getting on and where potentially we might need to be able to give more training and advice to your organization. So before we dive in, there are a couple of prerequisites when it comes to Microsoft's attack simulator training. So firstly, when it comes to licensing, you're gonna need either the Microsoft 365 E5 plan or Microsoft Defender for Office 365 Plan 2. So if you've got either of those, you can run attack simulations. And as an admin, you need to make sure that you have the right permissions to be able to set up these simulations. So for example, a security administrator, a attack simulator administrator, and I'll put them on the screen and also a link below so you can read more about the permissions and the prerequisites. Well, that's enough talking. Let's dive in and have a look at attack simulation training within Microsoft 365. All right, so let's get this party started and look at the attack simulation training. So we're here in the security.microsoft.com portal, which is really the home for Microsoft 365 security. And what we need to do on the left-hand side is come down to attack simulation training. And then from there, you're gonna to come to the home page, which has a bunch of rich dashboarding. Although <laughs> right now in my environment, it doesn't look so rich because we haven't actually created a simulation yet. So after we've done that, and in your environment, when you start doing this, you'll see all sorts of great information from how many people have completed the training, who are the repeat offenders, and what recent simulations have you been running? Then across the top, we do have our simulations, which we'll come back to in a bit, where we can actually create our simulations for all these different campaigns, whether it's if we're trying to fish for people's credentials, or we've got malware attachments, and so on and so forth. We can then look at all of these different payloads, and there's multiple different payloads here. We've got automatically created payloads, which are things like American Express in here, Black Friday offers, Facebook accounts, all sorts of awesome payloads which we already give you. But then you can also go ahead and create your own. So if you want to make one a little bit more customized to your organization or to your industry, you can of course do that as well. We won't go too far into automations right now. So the last thing we have here is then under settings. And first of all, we have our repeat offender threshold and by default, that is two. So if you fail one of these simulations twice, you're gonna be a repeat offender. If you feel that's too harsh, then you could move it up. But I think this is a pretty solid recommendation. And then you can enable user training recommendations. So you know, Microsoft can send those emails out to your end users. So these are some of the main things. At the bottom here, you can see you can exclude simulations for reporting. Maybe you're doing testing, something like that. So let's get this going. Let's go back to simulations and create our first simulation using the attack simulation here in Microsoft 365. So let's go ahead and hit launch simulation. So first of all, you've got to select your technique. And these have all been designed around the MITRE framework, which are really common social engineering techniques that we're seeing out in the field. So you've got things like credential harvesting, malware attachment, so on and so forth. But you might be thinking, well, Harry, what is a credential harvest? And you could read the quick blurb, but if you go to view details of credential harvest, it gives you the information here. So really it's, you know, we're trying to get a user to hit a URL and then hopefully put in and submit their username and password. And then it gives you a quick high level of what this, the flow to the end user is gonna look like. So user opens up the email, user clicks the link, and then they enter their credentials on a website. So if you're not familiar with the different techniques, you can hit the view details and it gives you a really nice explanation. So we're gonna leave this as credential harvest because I think this is a very common attack that we see. So let's go ahead now and hit next. So first up, we've got to give our simulation a name. 
I'm just going to call it in our case credential harvesting for VIP users. So we're going to go see how our executive suite get on when a credential comes because at the end of the day probably a lot of the people that are your VIP users hold more of the information and the keys to the castle to your organization. So we're going to go ahead and name that. You can, of course, in production, give it a nice long description so everyone knows what you're up to. But I'm just going to go ahead and hit next. So now we need to go ahead and select our payload. And this is very interesting because there's a couple ways we can do this. We can either use a pre-created payload, or if you've already created your own one, we can go ahead and select that. Or you can create a custom payload. And in our example, we're just going to use one out of the box, but if you did want to create a payload yourself, it does take you onto a different kind of workflow, but it can be really interesting. You could create something that's very unique to your organization or to your industry that you know people may have a hard time of working out whether it's phishing or whether it's a real email. So, of course, you can definitely go down the create a payload route, but for our case, we're going to select one of the ones that are already within the system. So you can see here there's 63 different items. There's a lot of different things that you can do in here. We're just going to take something common. I'm just going to use here that maybe we're going to do American Express password reset. So let's just go ahead and select that. And now that I've selected my payload, you'll notice that I can actually send a test email. So if you want to know what these look like before you go too far down the wizard here, you can just hit send a test. And then what that's going to do is send an email to the admin here that's logged in creating the simulation. So let's just go ahead and hit confirm. And now that that email has been sent, let's dive over to the administrator's mailbox for a moment to take a look. And there we have it. We now have an email from our, well, in this case, not the real American Express. And we can see that from the domain name here. It looks a little bit funky. But now we can see what this is going to look like. So did you recently request your one-time password? If you did not request it, go and secure your account immediately. So we're luring them in to go get their you know, email and their password, their credentials. So this is what it will look like. And if you're happy with that, let's just go back to the attack simulation here. And I'm going to close that. And I'm happy. I thought that was a really good email. So let's go ahead and hit next. And now we can go ahead and select who are the target users for this simulation. So we have a couple of options. We could do everyone in our organization, but it's going to exclude guests from the simulation, which is a good thing. You probably don't want to be a part of your simulation. Or you can specify specific users and groups. So if we do add users, you can now either search at the top what they've also done is suggested user groups like repeat offenders, you could do it by city, department, so on and so forth. Earlier I called this VIP users, we're just going to choose one user and I'm going to put in here Megan. And you can see if I just enter there, because it's all connected with our Azure Active Directory and the rest of Microsoft 365, I can easily go ahead and select one. So we're going to choose our marketing manager here, Megan. And then I'm going to go ahead and do add. And now we can see all of the different users and their job titles coming in to our targeted user list. So I'm happy with that. I'm going to go ahead and hit next. So now we get to one of the most important parts of when you're creating these campaigns, and that is training. Because it's one thing for somebody to get you know, it wrong and end up failing the simulation that we're doing. But it's so important that they have actionable training to know where they went wrong. So there's a few things that we can do here. And we can either do Microsoft training experience, and we're going to have a look at what that looks like in a moment. You could do no training, which I would recommend you don't choose. And then you can do redirect to a custom URL. So if you already had your own phishing training or you're using some other product for that, you could go ahead and just send them to that link and go from there. But we want to use the Microsoft training experience. And from there, we can either assign the training and we can get Microsoft to choose the correct training for the campaign that we're running here. So you know, in our technique, we will get some really interesting things around phishing, but in other techniques, it might give us different training. So we can allow Microsoft to choose that for us because one of the common challenges for security teams is that 
you know, they run a campaign, but they don't know what training fits best for that technique. So we're going to leave it as default. But if you wanted to, you could go ahead and select training courses yourself. It will then show you all the recommended courses from Microsoft, but you can go add in custom ones if you want as well. So we're going to leave it as assigned training for me. And at the bottom here, we can then select the due date. So should everyone be trained up within seven days, 15 days or 30 days? And we're just going to leave it as the default 30 days and then hit next. So now that we've selected that our users are going to get some training, we can now set up what that training page is going to look like. So there's a few things we can do here. We can select what the header should say and out of the box, it's pretty positive. It's okay, you're human, let's learn from this. And then the body is just telling them that, you know, criminals aren't stealing their credentials, don't panic, it's fine. But your IT team is redirecting you to an education page. And you, know, you can go ahead and change this. You know, you might want to say your security team instead of your IT team or whatever. But if you want to see what it looks like, you can just select preview page. And then from here, we can see that it's going to give them the name and it's going to say it's okay. And then this is the kind of, this is the payload that we selected. So this I think is a very nice way of displaying that this was just a test exercise here. We're just simulating it, but we want to ensure that your train says so doesn't happen again. So let's just close that out and then I'm going to go ahead and hit next. So now let's select our launch details. We can either just launch this simulation as soon as we've completed going through this wizard or you could schedule it at a later time. You know, maybe you're setting up multiple of these simulations and you've put in a change request and you're waiting for that to be approved. You could go ahead and do that as well. I'm gonna launch it as soon as possible in this demo. And then I could select how many days until the simulation ends. I'm gonna leave it as default. What I do think is really interesting at the bottom here is that if people are in multiple different time zones within your organization, well, you can enable region aware time zone delivery because it's probably going to be more impactful to deliver at the correct time within their working day. So you can enable that as well. I'm now going to go ahead and just hit next and we can review our simulation. Again, I can send a test. We know that we're doing credential harvesting. We're sending that to our VIP user. In this case, it's just Megan. And we're going to be doing our American Express password reset. So I'm pretty happy with this. I think this is going to be a great simulation. So I'm going to go ahead and hit submit. And now that the simulation has been scheduled, let's go ahead and hit done. And we can now see that we have all of our information here about our simulation, who created it, when it's launched, when it's ending, that we know it's in progress. So at this point, let's go ahead and dive in to Megan's profile and see what this looks like as an end user. Okay, so we're now logged in to Outlook as Megan and we can see that she's got an email from American Express confirming her one-time password. So this is the email that we sent from our campaign, but we're gonna assume Oh God, I've been breached my one-time password. I didn't reset that. So I need to click here to secure my account immediately. So I'm gonna go ahead as Megan and do that. And I'm gonna to continue to sign in because I wanna make sure that I'm securing my American Express. So sign in and then we'll give it the password. And there we go, our custom website has come up. We've got Megan Bowen, you were just fished. Oh, crikey, but it's okay because we can learn from this. And what's really interesting is it's also giving the reasons why we were fished. So it's told us here that domain spoofing was happened because the domain looks plausible but isn't correct. We can then go ahead and hit next and we can see here that we got security indicators. So you know, did you recently request a one-time password? In our case, we didn't, but let's just do next here. So this is the two things that it's saying that we've done wrong. And if we scroll to the bottom, it says that we've actually been assigned training to learn how to avoid this in the future. So let's go ahead and hit go to training. And now we can see as Megan that I've actually been assigned to do 
this web phishing training. It's telling us here, can I recognize web phishing? Well, for my previous performance, I obviously couldn't. So let's go ahead and start the training. And now you can see that we've got this really great video-based training course to get through. So I'm just gonna move on from here and get this training done as Megan. And then we're gonna jump in back as the admin and see what this looks like in our reporting. Okay, so we're now here back on the attack simulator as an admin, and let's have a look at some of the reports that we can see. So currently we're still in progress with our credential harvesting, it finishes tomorrow, but let's go have a look at our simulation efficacy report, and we'll go through a few other things as well. So first of all, we can see that our predicted compromise rate was 45%. We only targeted one person and they got compromised. So we're 100%, and we can see down at the bottom here what the predicted compromise was, how many users were compromised, and who clicked the link, so on and so forth. So this, when you start putting it to a lot more people, of course, will let you see how your organization is getting on and you know, how good they are at spotting you know, phishing attacks and so on and so forth. We can then see under user coverage how many people we've done a simulation with. So you know, we can see the main person that we targeted here was Megan. So in your world, you'll be able to see how many people have passed or how many people have been compromised throughout these benign testings. We can then see the success of your training. So we can see here who's completed it, who's not, who's actually gone through the training. In this case, we can see Megan was compromised. The last training she did was for mass market phishing. And we can actually see the date. And if you load up the all trainings, you'll get a kind of step-by-step -step of what trainings were completed and when. So that's gonna really help you when you start getting this to a larger environment. And then at the bottom here or the far right, we could see if there was any repeat offenders. In my case, there isn't. So at this point, we've gone through pretty much everything we need to see in the attack simulator. We've looked at how do we create simulations? How do we use a payload and then add training to that payload? Through to them what it looks like as an end user if you end up being compromised and have to do some training. And now we've looked at some of the reporting here within the attack simulation. So hopefully you found this video helpful. If you have, make sure you subscribe and we'll see you next week for another video.